How could the school system get this bad? Didn't America start with clear Christian convictions and practices? What happened? When the Puritans came to America, they said one of the reasons why they left England and were coming to the New World is so that they could have stronger training for their children. The main textbook they were using, of course, was the Bible. Many people are familiar with the New England Primer, which taught children how to read with ABC lessons tied to the Bible. So when you learned your A, you didn't learn about apples, you learned about Adam, and attached to each letter of the alphabet was a little woodcut and then a biblical truth. In the case of uh, Adam, in Adam's fall we sinned all. So children were taught their basic curriculum anchored in biblical truth and theological principle. The founders were convinced that for a country to be successful, it had to be virtuous. And there was no way that you could have a virtuous republic without training in the principles of religion, specifically in the principles of Christianity. So in early America, our founders had a biblical outlook that included an education that was grounded in the Word of God. The Puritans required a common school the goal was to have a literate populace for the purpose of understanding scripture. Now, over time, those commitments began to change. And so the convictions about the necessity of Christianity and Christian education was replaced with the idea of a more generic theistic education. The same year the New England Primer was published, another book appeared, one that would radically transform educational philosophy for generations. That book was called Essay Concerning Human Understanding by John Locke. John Locke's philosophy presented the idea that the human mind at birth is a tabula rasa, a blank slate. This was a complete rejection of the doctrine of original sin, one of the notable separating points between Christian education and the humanistic public school system. America's public schools got it wrong at this fundamental level, the very nature of the child. It's quite remarkable that we have allowed this particular educational philosophy to dominate America for so long when the early history of the country indicated that it was a family responsibility, a church responsibility, not the responsibility of the civil government to educate the nation's children. If you go back in history, you will see that uh, the government's involvement in education was very minimal. During America's history, homeschooling was never considered alternative education. In fact, for many notable Americans, it was their primary means of education. Many remarkable leaders were raised as either partially or completely schooled at home. During the 18th century, Enlightenment philosophy began to take hold in America. The popularity and influence of anti-Christian Enlightenment thinkers like Jean-Jacques Rousseau of France cast a lasting shadow across the colonies that would undermine the liberty Americans enjoyed at the end of the 18th century. As we moved into the 1800s, the spectre of mass public education would soon appear on the horizon. All the clues were leading me to Boston, the birthplace of compulsory education in America. <laughs> 